Welcome. This is a tutorial on how to create atmosphere in your architectural renderings using Adobe Photoshop. So basically it's about the step from a very dull architectural rendering, something like this, with very blank surfaces and not much going on, um, to something like this. Let's start with color curves. So this is a kitchen I rendered from a catalog and apart from minor corrections concerning some contact shadows underneath the tomatoes, they were painted in here with a soft brush which has been scaled vertically so that it's really really uh, kind of flat uh, with 30% opacity in multiply. I also want to brighten up that image. And you should always think about light intensity and like the freshness of your image. I try to keep the middle and dark tones rather low, so I have good contrast in my image, but I still have a very, very kind of cheering up mood. As you may have noticed, this color correction also intensified the saturation of my colors. In this case I like this, but in other cases you might, may want to put the layer to luminosity, so that way the image only gets brighter. Color balance is crucial to get atmosphere in your images. If you look at this laboratory, then you will see that the straight rendering appeared rather dull and that this was partly on purpose because I tried to avoid having areas that were too bright like all white areas shouldn't be there too much and there's nothing which is pure black so this gives me some room for color correction this was a really simple one using levels here uh, with which is just kind of stretching my histogram so it's ranging from here now to the full range so we get overall a brighter image with more contrast and this is what we're talking about now the color balance and the color balance is to be found right here and it's separated in shadow midtones and highlights and you can for example increase a yellowishness in dark areas I tinted in blue and some red in the midtones and the highlights were made to look a bit kind of aggressive and artificial, like coming from some sort of chemical lights. So if we just go back, then you can see what I've chosen and really every single little movement changes the overall mood of your image. Next step is blooming. Blooming kills those hard edges between dark and bright areas in your image. This really appears like light is going through your scene. If you look at all those edges, they are nicely blurred by a simple effect. And you can see the difference from here to there. So let's just take the raw layer, the raw, raw rendering, and just copy the layer using Command J. and pull down the colors using curves so only the really bright spots remain and the rest should be softly turned to dark and if you're feeling like there's too much color left then use command U and pull out the saturation so there's still a bit of color left then the only thing you need to do is use filter 
Gaussian blur. And there's no fixed value, but it really depends on your overall image size, how much you want to blur those edges. After that, you put screen mode on and you can play around with the opacity until you have a credible result. This was the Gaussian one and you can use the Gaussian one to also use motion blur on top of that. Motion blur can make some kind of rays or longer rays going through your scene. And this has not much to do with logic, it's rather some artistic decision. Now highlights are a rather cheap trick. If you have any region in your image that's fairly bright and you want to create the impression that there's even more light going on, create a new layer on top of everything, Ch take the brush and just paint on with a very soft round brush, set the size and it's as simple as that, painting in highlights. Of course you can move them around later on and reduce their opacity. Oh yeah, and you should really play around with that light stuff. For example, you can scale this and place this somewhere. You can make them really, really small. You can blow them. and rotate them around. Just make sure it fits your scene. A refinement of highlights are light spots. Now what are light spots again? Well, it's basically just another spot on a new layer, but this time with a hard edge. And you put noise on it that contains a fair amount of color you Gaussian blur that just so you get some sort of colorful dots and then you can use this for your kind of lens errors. The main thing about that is finding the right value in terms of opacity, the right location, and the right size. You can use multiple guys of those. use them wisely and only reduced and in some cases they just don't fit. If you look closely you can see those light spots in this image. That's one of those guys. I think this one too. But now let's go on with light streaks and light streaks are these kinds of things. You just isolate your raw render Duplicate it, darken it so only the brightest parts remain, and then you scale them in, maybe like so. Give them some Gaussian blur, excuse me, some motion blur. This time it can be quite strong. So you really want to get that kind of streaked look 
Then you put a Gaussian blur on it to avoid that sharp edge here. And you can set it to screen, for example. But I would encourage you to kind of experiment with other things as well, but mostly it's going to be screen. So now try to get the light direction. I'm talking about this edge here. Of course, you have some sort of perspective distortion in the room, so it might just be a little bit more like this, but that's not really vital. And if you're happy with those streaks direction-wise, you can go on with the next step, which is using a layer mask. And I just paint black on the mask. That way I can kind of make them fade out. And I can apply that mask and create a new one, which this time renders some clouds in there. This gives some kind of foggy look. And I can even change the contrast of this mask to cut it out or to make it more sudden. It really depends on your like. There really is no need to call fake call sticks fake because so far all we've done was about faking. The next um, crucial step for me was to kind of make those surfaces more vivid. I'm talking about the ceiling and the walls in the back here and all those surfaces that are okay in terms of their brightness but still boring to look at. And in architectural scenes you will have a hard time um, with activating surfaces because you cannot go crazy with a bump map uh, like in a fantasy image. Um, you, you cannot put dirt on it like crazy. Your client will not like that and you, you cannot do so much about the colors. So light is a very elegant option um, that still pushes your image without being the star, without attracting too much attention to them. And I can just show you what the caustics are doing in my office. So maybe for your taste this is too strong, but um, maybe it's good to sh just to show you. Um, because if you're being realistic, if sun like that is bursting inside your office and there's so much stuff lying around, then those kind of things will be, like those reflections, will be all over the room, most likely. So how did I do these coast caustics? Those caustics are not hand painted, they're not rendered either, they are just a flipped over image of the rendering. So these kind of bits are coming from here or so. Um, I can show you this technique. Um, let's just duplicate this layer into a new document. And you just copy the background layer with Command J. These will be the caustics. And you turn them down again. It's always the same trick, basically. And um, then you flip over the image like this, hit enter, and you can use screen already. And well, that way you see that this trick doesn't work right away, but you would usually um, pull the saturation out maybe not totally, a bit of warmth is good. And um, you can always play around with a nice position of, of that kind of thing. Um, place them wisely.
try to use some Gaussian blur because those reflections will have some kind of distribution. Maybe like this. And now you use a mask and you just paint in black on your mask to get rid of um, caustics that are not wanted. So use a rather sharp brush and for example on the back side maybe I don't want it here. If geometry is too obvious, like this is readable as a desk, then I can kind of paint around here and uh, remove stuff that's too clear and you can also, yeah, maybe I like it on the screen but I don't want it here, so um, you can just basically be an artist here and uh, use several copies of your caustics layer and just, excuse me, paint um, one region at a time. So, um, of course, you can blur stuff even more if you want to. And you can also reduce the opacity. So just something is going on on your surfaces and no, no human is really able to kind of realize where these caustics come from. So you have some artistic freedom here. And um, of course stuff like that takes time. And I, I took the time I needed for these four layers of caustics and I can show you one by one. I did two for those walls. This guy was more for the ceiling. So just I have some small bits there, some on the floor down here and some here in the foreground. And yeah, that's just my way of distributing caustics in my room. So now let's talk about lens distortion and vignetting. In this shot, you can see the difference between a raw rendering and the vignetting. And this was done by just copying the original layer and using filter lens correction. And we're just doing the opposite of what we would do with a photo. You could even put in some chromatic aberration. I don't want to do this. And we could darken the corners, which makes our scene more intimate and you focus more on the center. Another way of darkening parts of your image is by drawing shadows. For example, in our kitchen scene, I had this problem that these tomatoes were looking like they were flying. And I wanted to have these kind of contact shadows. So usually they are set to multiply and not 100%, but let's just make them visible. And I think you can tell that sometimes just painting them in can be an option. Like let's use black. And of course size and stuff like that is really important. So you would then scale them so they fit in perspective. Get really close, this is kind of pixel work. Set it to multiply 30% or maybe more and zoom out to 
kind of judge what you've done. A bigger example is a tree in the foreground because you often have spare room like in, in many visualizations the house is somewhere in the back and you have 10 meters in front and there's nothing going on just a blank space and a really good idea is to just use a tree shadow in the foreground to have something lively going on. So let's just um, grab some the blue channel of this tree and invert the selection and copy paste it to this scene and um, we can kind of uh, use a color overlay and set it to a really dark tone blur it so it either should match those edges or it should be more blurred because usually the tree is further away than this solid geometry but make it just that it looks good and is more or less credible then you adjust the opacity and you should invest loads of time uh, much time with the exact position of that and if you feel like the color is not all right then just play around with that does it need more red or is it rather something that goes like a bit more blue so this needs time usually and when you're done with that you can do perspective corrections with command T and control excuse me command you can kind of change the direction so now for the last part we are talking about image overlay and image overlay is what contributes greatly to our example image here in the background. So let's have a look at it. As you can see, I'm using loads of layers that are responsible for various effects and we talked about most of them. So we're not gonna go through them one by one but we'll rather talk about my last secret, if you like. And um, this is, this has been the base image. And again, I used a copy for, um, this is just bringing some minor reflections in there. Please ignore that. Then I, used um, a blurred layer for getting more brightness in there I repeated that with for example motion blurred um, shining parts like lights and used masks so I don't have them all over my image I used color balance I used levels, I used light streaks, and yeah, some kind of curves. But what's special about this image is that I used images in the background using a mask in my uh, main image, in my rendering, and What's crucial about those background images is that you find realistic curves in order to make them appear really bright and they shouldn't be just washed out but you really should pay attention to what you're doing there so it still looks credible. So don't just make them transparent by 50% or so. There's a lot you can improve with using curves. 
I also used some kind of dirt excuse me on my windows and these were overlaid but they actually are photos of dirty windows I just scaled them in so they roughly fit and then if you set them to overlay um, then they should turn out overlay 100% quite realistic but I put more photos in front like a blurred version of some landscape to just get some color spilled in my room strongly blurred and I used the fiber effect from filter render fibers and just made a mask for the windows so I even have some more dirt going on there and I wanted to have a really kind of flowery sunny atmosphere inside my room so I just took the freedom of taking some flower and grass scene with a soft light and 70% inside so you get more and more the feeling that a lot of late afternoon sunlight is coming through that window. I also took a copy of this part here and stretched it out and put it outside my um, my room if you like and luckily because of all those layers in between uh, on my glass all the dirt layers they make it look um, quite interesting. You could of course argue how strong you want this effect but in combination it looks really credible because the light goes through this green bush or so and it kind of spills in some green bouquet. Then I thought how about having some colored vignette on the right side and some blue so we have a nice contrast from green, yellow and blue tones. The major curve was there to bring in back some contrast and I have to admit that this workflow is quite destructive. It's moving the, the kind of uh, values a lot around and that's why I've um, done 16-bit rendering before I started with all this. Because if you only stick with 8-bit, then your histogram will look uh, very, very, very bad in the end. But this remains smooth due to 16-bit. Of course, all the other image layers were 8-bit only because I got them from the internet. All right, that was it. I hope you learned something in creating atmosphere and architectural renderings with Adobe Photoshop.